Hamilton of the MK being a family stock fell. Um, I don't want to offend anybody, but that is a narrative that's out there. So how do you intend to not make it a personality count? Because as we can see with the EFF, it's a detrimental position to be to base the ideas of a whole organization on one person. Thank you. TV. My question is based on what what criteria did uh, MKP uses to select the leaders that we have just announced? And another question goes to I, I don't want to say flight, but it's directly to flight and the leadership of M M MKP. Is it another way of dismantling EFF when you make flight the national chairperson? Thank you. Today, hi everybody. So my name, my name is Natasha Cree from SABC News. Um, in terms of the recent announcement of the high command, um, Mr. Maseko did mention that it must be gender balanced. But unfortunately, I don't see any young people, I might be wrong, but will there be youth representation um, in the high command? Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Marcelo, but you also said that the officials, um, the top eight officials won't be deployed to parliament, except in exceptional circumstances. So Mr. Nico Fuechibam will be, de be deployed to parliament. Furthermore, um, in terms of those 18 parliamentarians that were expelled, uh, from Parliament, they claim that they weren't told about the expulsion, and furthermore, they say that um, the expulsion was actually orchestrated to make way for the new um, MPs. How true is that? And then, just my last question for former President Jacob Zuma: the um, Mr. Javlan Kumar has now opened a fraud case um, against you, alleging that you um, unlawfully removed him as director of the NPO. Um, just your reaction on that. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Sandra Moleva from the Sunday Times. Uh, my question is, when the leadership collective rather was announced, um, there was a mention that wide consultations were done. Now in the absence of elected structures, who exactly was consulted? And secondly, um, this one is for Mr. Shivangu. Uh, the last time we met you, um, announced your exit um, at the EFF headquarters, where you kindly asked us not to ask you about what led to this decision. Now that we are here at your new political home, please uh, expand on what exactly attracted you to the MK party and how that process, how, what happened for you to find yourself here? Thank you very much. Yeah, they say you can run, but you can't hide. I will leave the. Let's uh, read. You, you read us, and then among yourself, there's a collective. You decide who will respond to this question, and we we'll request that uh, the entire leadership comes. I was, I was requesting DSG to take the questions from ZP because they were very appropriate in terms of even her. She's a very strong man. If we're to get in terms of the CV and the character, you will see that uh, we've honestly recruited the best, uh, amongst the best, as the president has said. But also the, the leadership collective that was announced in terms of, but also just combine it with uh, who was uh, consulted in what skills. The leadership collective that you, you also saw here, that you also see, uh, you can vet it, you can go and check, you see that it's, uh, it's vast and uh, it would, impeccable records in terms of it. So it's a, a I would say I, I would differ in terms of how we approach in terms of the leadership women that we have. Yes, and as for the family stock fell, uh, it's just unfortunate that uh, uh, that question came in the sense that uh, I am not a Zuma. Uh, Floyd is not a Zuma. Uh, and, and the Muso is not in terms of that. Uh, our attraction, all of us to MKP, is in terms of the ideology that we all hold. 
So the party is centered around the philosophy and ideology. The philosophy is the pan-Africanism. The ideology is in terms of a true liberation movement that we have. That's what our party is centered on. It's not centered in terms of it. The president happens to also embody in terms of that philosophy and ideology. And we are not ashamed to, to say we suck from his knowledge in terms of that understanding. And the party will remain the true reparation movement uh, because of that ideology that one has. What we are announcing today was also at the macro level how we are going to show and strengthen so that we are able to achieve that. So I thought uh, maybe let me just explain it to you then. Uh, uh, what, uh, how did we able to get in terms of it? We consulted our members. We consulted our structures. We do have interim structures as much as we are reconfiguring we are uh, 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 improving in terms of governance. We had to consult. In Orlando, we launched our People's Mandate. That People's Mandate, I'm sure all of us have seen it. Some of the comrades that you saw here were instrumental in the People's Mandate. So that talks to the skills that the party was actually uh, uh, announcing, that the president was unfolding and giving to the, to the nation. So if you look at that people's mandate, not even a cent was spent for it. No consultants. It was all professionals that love the MKP, that align with the ideology of MKP. So I think they also assist in terms of just having a sense uh, how wide we were able to uh, 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 consult. They, they also come from all provinces. All provinces are represented in the structure as a way of inclusiveness, but as a way of ensuring that we grow. Uh, I think there were questions that were specific to Comrade Floyd, which I'm sure would be happy to, 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 to take to answer to it. Uh, then there is a question of, in terms of gender balance, I think that I've, 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 I've uh, uh, addressed it. The youth, you are correct. The party is, in terms of, it's got two youth structures. MK Student Movement and the, M, the MK Youth League. And in the statement that the president at least had for the press briefing, it is clear that we are also going to strengthen in terms of those structures and allow them to be autonomous so that they are also able to have programs that are aligned within the motherboard. But they also become, the leadership there becomes ex-official members of the National High Command. As the, I was reading the president's statement, it is there, it's captured. So I think that also addresses uh, let me uh, let me also give it to Comrade Floyd so that he just gives me the specific questions. Around and the greetings to the president of Condolences Party, the President Zuma, and the Deputy President, the Dr. Shope, the, the Secretary General, Dr. Maseko the Treasurer General, the Commander Mates, the National Chairs, Consinati Teko, and the Deputy National Chair, is Commander Sibiluan, and the DSG, is uh, Commander Nomuzi. We are here in the press conference of Mkoto, which is a party to announce uh, the structures of Mkondo, which is a party. That is the primary objective, a party which we voluntarily have joined them for correct reasons. Uh, when we were speaking in the other platform, we 
made a plea for avoiding of mischaracterization of an otherwise correct and revolutionary decision and act to join Congress as party. What President Zuma is doing with Mkondo as a party is what the statement of Mkondo as a did in 1961 on the 16th of December to say that now that the liberation movement has been banned, what other platform do we express ourselves? What other instrument do we use to fight for total liberation? There is absolutely no doubt that the liberation movement is no longer existing in the form that it's supposed to be. It has been captured totally. It is directed from elsewhere. And then this is a platform. And what is unique about Mkondo is a pattern. It's a purposeful foundational approach and principle is to assemble people who can govern society to come and govern society in South Africa. It's not wishful thinking to say that we have got these ideas of what we're going to do. It's to assemble the best of the best. So if you were to check even with the people that have been identified now, the first consignment that is going to the National Assembly, if you go to check their track record objectively and not bled by these nonsense of right-wing media platforms, you will accept that the contributions that Air Brand Mulita did in the public investment corporations in the in Transnet in ESCO, you would appreciate the contributions that Esiamonga Gama did and contributed in a Transnet, stable organizations. Whatever can be said, even with uh, the former SARS commissioner, there have been a lot of things which were misled about for a very long time that everyone else who is not a puppet of the establishment is the name of the people. That is not the case. And people will think that I'm saying this because I'm on this platform now only. You can check the public statements and writings and articles and even interviews that we did when we came to the realization that for a very long time we misled. In terms of our <coughs> characterization of society, they say they captured because they were no longer in control of key state institutions. The white capitalist establishment was no longer in control, and then they say there's a crisis. If there was truly a crisis, why why is that crisis not there now? Can they show us the crisis which they say existed before? So to assemble the best of the best amongst black people to govern society is a best decision. And to associate with that is a best and sound decision. People who can govern, like it's, it's as simple as that. <laughs> if you say that who amongst ourselves is the best, and then you say, let's assemble those who can demonstrate that they have got capacity to run otherwise very complex and huge institutions. Who are not going to collaborate with the establishment and teach on electricity on and off and say it's not changing because there's a crisis of this and that. People who are genuine and real and have never done anything wrong and of course will be criminalized for one reason or another. I agree that we should unite all the progressive forces into common agenda because this thing of small, unviable political parties is not sustainable for the future of black people in South Africa. It is not sustainable at all. We can't, we can't. And, and the temptation as well, and I'm not characterizing the EFF, is that when you have got multiple of these, like they end up being fiefdoms of individuals. Um, IFP, UDM kind of arrangement, what, what is it to achieve with them? <laughs> when all of us can set aside our, our, our very strong egos and say, 
I don't have to be a member of parliament. I don't have to be a deputy president. I can come and be led by a collective, like be subjected to a collective, and be asked to go and organize branches of MKP from scratch. And that is what we are here for. In terms of, and so that there is not even confusion. By the way, we spoke about the unification of all progressive parties with President Zuma last year, October, before the official announcement of Mkotos as a party. And I was amongst those that said that let us go and contest elections as separate political parties. We'll contest each other on the ground, but we'll come back to talk about what do we do moving forward. Thank you. So the, the attempt for unification is not just an opportunistic one because there were electoral declines of the EFF and all of those things. It's a genuine political discussion, which all South Africans must enter into, those who are in favor of the revolution. Because revolution is the content of what we're standing for. It's not just know if it's me, you're betraying me. You know, some people will say, you're betraying me. Where does that enter? I, and, and you don't even once suggest that I'm betraying the revolution. I will never betray the revolution. <laughs> <laughs> We're not in the business of trying to please each other's egos here. Yeah. Yeah. We're in the business of bringing a revolutionary movement that is going to emancipate the black majority and Africans in particular, and we are unapologetic about that. <laughs> that is what we stand for. And President Zuma, when he was inducting all of us yesterday, he says that we might be friends and we might think we're friends, but friendship won't apply here. Yeah. Yes. If you do not do these things right, you're going to be taken care of. <laughs> Some people were asking me that what is going to happen because in NKP leadership changes every week and all of those things. What if they change? I say, like, if I'm removed as national organizer, I'm going to be a member. Yeah. And if I'm removed as a member, I'm going to be a volunteer and put posters even without approval of the leadership. <laughs> and that is what we are all about. I think all of us, all the progressive forces, let's unite and build this movement. There's no dictatorship, there's political discussions. In all the times that we've got to enter every present zone, he has the patience to have political and ideological discussions to persuade people about how to move forward. He does not stand to subjectively gain anything out of that. It's not like he's subjectively going to gain anything out of it. He has said that let's unite all the progressive forces so that we can build a solid movement that will take us forward. Otherwise, the other things that are said are not worth responding to. We're going to go to the ground. Let's coexist, all of us, and then let's persuade each other. Let's build the MKP as a party which is going to take over the other ones. Comrade Floyd, as a nation, as a national organizer, because we want to destroy it here, I'm paraphrasing. Far from it. Yeah. Far from it. Comrade Floyd has been, all our comrades are deployed to various structures on merit. There is nobody who's being destroyed because, sorry, there's no one who's being deployed because we want to destroy the, the EFF as a party. We are running our own political programs as the Umkonto is a party, regardless of the EFF's position on any issue. So he, he is a very experienced politician, he's sharp like a razor, I said that last night, and I repeat it. He is sharp like a razor, and no doubt play a very important role as far as the MK party is concerned going forward. I've dealt with that. The second question relates to the second question relates to comrades of the MK party who were expelled and who are now taking legal action against the MK party. 
That matter is sub judicial. As a matter of law, we do not comment on cases that are pending before court. All I can tell you is this. They have every right, just like any one of you here, has any right to take anyone to court. You can make all kinds of allegations. At the end of the day, it is a judge sitting alone in his or her chambers who will decide the case on the 3rd of September. We are glad that the hearing date has been expedited and the matter will, finalize, will be finalized very soon. The other question related to a case, I think it's a, a case that has been opened against the president uh, by Mr. Jablani Kumalo, and I think there are allegations of fraud that have been leveled. Mr. Kumalo, similarly, like any human being walking the surface of this earth, has a right to open a case against anyone that he chooses to open a case against. It is unwise to comment on the allegations that have been made by Mr. Kumalo in his court papers, which allegations have been leveled against the president of Mkondo with the party. We do not, as a rule, comment on matters that are pending before court. It is completely unwise, and we do not do that as a matter of policy and as a rule. Thank you very much. No, thank you very, no, thank you very much, uh, President, ladies and gentlemen. Um, there are two <clears throat> critical questions that have been raised. Um, and I like Mr. Uh, Tsegimazwai raises the question of the underrepresentation of women. <coughs> Excuse me, I, I, I have a bit of some flu. So don't think that I have a sexy voice. Just <laughs> 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 it's a different. Um, the, 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 the fact of the matter is that in NK there is no decision <clears throat> with regards to the underrepresentation of women. And the fact of the matter is that it is essentially at the center of the challenge of the National High Command to resolve that question and return to it. <clears throat> so that next time when Assistant say you like us more. Uh, because you do like us, which is uh, interesting. I also like him. <laughs> but, so it is one of those organizational challenges because I think we should all take a cue from one thing and one thing alone while establishing ourselves as, a, ourselves as an organization from a functional point of view. And therefore, amongst other things, is the question of the representation of women women is at the center of such a question. I think there was also <coughs> a gentleman from ENCA. What's his name? A view. Yeah. Uh, so he, he, he raises the question of what is the tenure for, uh, for leadership. <coughs> Again, I would say to you, that what is important for us is to establish the organization, stabilize it, advance it. We will then, on the basis of such, from time to time, <coughs> review uh, our situation as an organization and decide on our state of readiness uh, so that we could then get to a point which I suspect you seem to be suggesting. And that's the question of having ordinarily a conventional conference that elects one of and so on. At this stage, we can't do so. <clears throat> and we can't do so precisely because what is important is that we need to put the infrastructure in place and let it be a working infrastructure. But this infrastructure must also be subjected to a scientific process in terms of <clears throat> assessing its state of readiness to move to 
to the next levels. So I think that would be the, the answer to that. The question of unity of the progressive forces <clears throat> is not a question of the nicety. That no, because we need to be nice about it and so on, and we feel in a particular way, and therefore we need to do it. <clears throat> it's necessitated by the mood on the ground. The mood of our people is simple. Africans <clears throat> are yearning for freedom and emancipation, but they're also yearning to be human. At the center of uh, why MK was established is to respond to that particular challenge. Challenge of Africans and black people in general in for freedom and emancipation and then in human. <clears throat> so it, 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 is, it is something that <clears throat> I think hasn't been emphasized before that we need to pay sufficient attention to uh, and be committed and dedicated to. The only thing that you can do at home, you correct, is to be aware uh, at all material times. So let me just, uh, yeah, those are the few questions that are related to you. Thank you very much. I've, I've, I've had a pleasure to go and see the president in Canada for since he requested me to assist because I've been part of the ground forces, the volunteer, the activist on the ground. Um, I was surprised at the number of us, of the people that I saw there, that were waiting to see the president. The truth of the matter is, we are out in the beginning. I'm Katar. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a Let me then translate. I think we are putting so much pressure to the president in terms of us being able to access him. Because when you are there at 12 noon or 1, you can, so you can see the president at midnight and still fresh for that 12 hours, even being able to see. So there's no one who stand back in terms of that. Some without appointments are able to see the president. Why I like your question though is that uh, part of what this office has to be responsible for is exactly that, to relieve the president in terms of the challenges that are taken directly to the president. The functionality of this office will be determined by the number of the queue to Inyanga or Rinkos Lapenamala decreasing, that at least this office is then functioning. So it's not true that the president is not accessible. He's the most accessible president of all for every point within that. So anyone can then be able to access the president. As the corporate as corporate project already said, he also is the most president that can be that is able to listen and engage with you on any matters for that matter. I think there was a question uh, about uh, in terms of I think it was around our international relations. Uh, the answer is really very clear. We are aligning. I think the uh, comrade from Floyd was said it also quite well. We are aligning with the progressive forces in Africa and also in the world that are fighting the neoliberal agenda and imperialism. But uh, the policy conference that uh, we had expressed here is going to detail in terms of uh, how our policy will be like.
I think there was a question that was uh, directed to the Congress Fraud about IEC. Um, yes. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, I would like to address the question on the representation of women. Uh, I want to refer you to the statement of the, the media statement by the President, where it was clearly outlined that um, at the National High Command, you did see the reflection of women, and we are striving to get more women that are to serve in the National High Command. The, the credibility of, of those women, Floyd spoke to it, that we possess sound and solid expertise, experience, and our credentials. I'm saying our because I'm part of the National High Command. We, we, we are as strong as you would like to see in Ziki. We are strong and our voices shall be strong and be more stronger because we're representing the women that are silenced, that cannot talk for their own. Then the second aspect is this, that um, in, in, the, in the statement by the president, the president clearly indicates that from the National High Command to the provincial detachments, those are the structures from the provincial high de uh, from the pro provincial detachment we are going to have a representation of two women from each region and we are going to have two representation from our representatives from the youth there was a question that that had, that, that, that was uh, asking about the representation of the youth. So be assured that in all structures from the provincial detachment, the regional detachment, up to the VD, women shall be, present, shall be represented. We are striving for the 50% representation of women as MK. And we'll definitely make the, make, make, make the 50 percent representation. We are striving and we are going to make those strides. Thank you. The director of the program. And thank you very much uh, to the comrades who have answered all the questions sufficiently, satisfactory to everyone. Uh, well, there were questions that were directed to me. Fortunately, my colleagues have answered those questions. <laughs> so I'm not going to answer them. <laughs> but uh, just to also say, so that we don't say this fellow, we last saw him uh, talking now, he's, he can't talk. He's just uh, the voice has gone on, blah, blah, blah. But thank you for very much for coming uh, to hear us, and I think it is absolutely important that uh, we interact with you. There's one thing you are missing, <laughs> all of you. Because we are asking questions as if you are talking to the organization that has been here for 
1960-something, etc., etc. We are not, we have not yet even finished a year. We haven't. But the kind of questions you are asking is as if this party has been there. Why are you not doing this? Why are you not doing that? Not a single one of you said, but guys, you have created something that has never happened in the world. <laughs> Just to be, to be honest, to acknowledge things that have happened. There's not even a single country that had a party with only six months that shook all well. political parties. Well. <clears throat> you know, you want, you want to find something wrong somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> There were questions that were asked, and I can't uh, respond to the one which uh, <clears throat> our judge said matters in court. You don't talk about them outside of court. Yeah. Now, if I've been charged, then let us go to court where we listen uh, to accusations or whatever. With regard to the man, I'm just forgetting his name, <laughs> who said that uh, he has raised, <laughs> he has uh, made a he has made charges against me. But it's a very wonderful story that we'll talk one day. How did this man met Zuma? And what Zuma said to him? And where Zuma sent him to do what? For what reasons? Mm. It's a very nice story. <clears throat> Partly because Zuma, as one of those who were trained for underground, when he decided to take actions against his organization, he went underground. And this was part of underground work. That Zuma must not say, I've either done this and done this. Zuma must send some very much unknown people to undertake certain things. Those are the rules of underground. I'm just telling you the story that will be told at the right time. Zuma trusted as he always trusts people. Trusted his people and gave some tasks. Like in the long line of our struggle, there were people who were given tasks, but who sold out. Yes. <clears throat> and I can tell you stories about it. <clears throat> so I'm just saying to the one who was asking the question, don't worry, yeah. you will get the answers at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> And I must also say something about this organization, Mkondo Sisu. Because I believe that uh, quite a number of you, when this organization will be having a few years going up, you would feel that it, not to be in Mkondo Esizu is almost committing something wrong. Yes. <laughs> because Mkondo Esizu is the final answer of the problems of our country. Yes. <laughs> you might, if you are a funny person, try to find reasons why it is not so. But do not find because it is absolutely correct. For us as oppressed people to stand up and liberate ourselves. <clears throat> if we don't do so, we'll be a funny kind of a nation. 
that praises oppression, either indirectly or directly. I can't understand, and I would never understand, that a South African who was here before the arrival of people from Europe, the country was taken, many people were killed in the wars, finally the population was driven to the corners, and the whole world of this country was taken, and everybody has everything, those who came. There's not a single one who has nothing, except the indigenous people. Now, if we are an indigenous people, we want to criticize people who are saying, let us bring our country back. So, there's something absolutely wrong with us. That's why I believe that with time, we will be together. <clears throat> we will be together. If I was a journalist, I would be asking very wonderful questions. How did you come to this idea to help us to go to a job? I would ask that question. Just let us know. Just take us with you so that we can quickly correct the wrongs. I wouldn't be saying, Mr. Soma, why did you do this? Ask a question which seems to be opposite of what we need to do. And I'm telling the truth. One day when you are old like me, I'm still young though. <laughs> you will say that young man was right. What had happened to us? Why did we ask questions which we wanting to, you know, reduce the correct thing that some of our people were doing? Uh, let me not say much because uh, I know you love listening to me. <laughs> because I did not want to speak, but somebody said, man, talk, please. Just make them happy. Just say something. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> no, one of the points that I wanted to make is that uh, the interpretation of the comrade <clears throat> uh, who is sitting here that I'm standing next to. Mm -hmm. This one, this one, this one, this one. You don't know. There are politicians and politicians. This comrade have known from when he was very young yes. in the ANC Youth League. As when I picked him up that he is a real politician. His politics, which I... <clears throat> defy a scientific politics. This young man. He's a young man to me, don't worry that he's big than me. <laughs> Honest politician. Honest. Clear political. He takes decisions at the right time for good reasons. And I'm happy that today he told what you all did not, did not, did not know. That when I started, after taking a decision <clears throat> to fight the African National Congress underground, and I had an opportunity to say we needed to come to correct politics about our country and our operations or whatever. I took a decision to meet all political parties, black political parties, to talk to them about the, the destiny of a black person in South Africa. Because whatever we're doing, having our parties, different parties 
etc. We're all missing the point that we are oppressed, all of us as blacks. No matter how much we did not understand, we're trying to fight among ourselves, we're missing the point. Because the white population <clears throat> took a decision to take us out of everything in South Africa. We, all of us, but the single one, no matter how people look at love. Is a fact. The British lead the debate with the Africans that black people must never allow it to be to have rights in this country. They must have no right to vote or to be voted for. They persuaded the Africans after they met the Anglo Global War, and finally they agreed. We must never have this at our level. Now you might deny it if you want to. I'm going to go to the hospital. 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 Whether we like it or not, it is a fact. It is a fact, you must know. <clears throat> there was a conspiracy against black people not to participate in their country, <clears throat> in running of the country, in being voted for or to vote. It is a fact. It was a, a discussion or a meeting of, which was at, uh, what is this place near Johannesburg? Fernach. Fernach. They were having a discussion to bring peace and harmony in this country after the Anglo Boer War. The decision was taken. Many of you don't know. That's when we were made. Not to vote, <clears throat> not to participate in the running of the country, and everything. It's a serious matter, it's not a small matter. It's an old matter, but it's a very new matter. It affects us now. Mm -hmm. It affected us then, it still affects us now. That's the reason why when we said we are coming to peace in our country, Many things have been put in laws, in practice, in behavior, in finances, in the economy. You will never come out. It's a serious matter. It is a serious matter. So some of us are sitting here <clears throat> working for <clears throat> organizations that gave news and were being diverted to discuss all the other things. If there is a person like my brother here, there is no happiness to say, thanks God, the good people are coming together. Mm -hmm. What do you want? Yeah. What do you want? Yeah. You, 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 you make the news about us being ourselves. We make news about ourselves sent by big fellows with money behind who say, we'll pay you, go and deal with them. That's what it is, if I tell the truth. There's been no wonderful question here that says, but how did we come to this good idea? that the black people must come together and be united like others. Instead of asking that question, why have you joined this one or not that one? Is it not true? 
It is. Fuman. Turn in your food. Fuman. Okay, let me leave this up. I have that stuff. <clears throat> Just to tell you, somebody asked a question about Zuma being chased away from the ANC, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> you said you are not going to leave the ANC. You die in the ANC. But you are forming another organization. Only my brother here understood that fair one. The reason why I said I will never leave the ANC is because I love history. I know history. The ANC was established by the, our ancestors. The traditional leaders, our pastors were black, our intellectuals to defend to defend the black person who has been suppressed by the whites and they knew what they were doing and it was the organization of all of us they were uniting us because prior to that the unity was not at that level it was to all these traditional leaders were in their areas, so to speak. But they realized that the black person is being taken out of his own country whilst living in his own country. And it was important for us to do so. And if we have to die for it, we must. And many have died for it, fighting for our liberation. I know that that situation is always made to be heard to light thing. So that is not a small thing. Many people died, many people stayed in prison, many were killed for fighting for their rights. Tortured to death. Others were thrown into the sea, you never know, never find them again. Can only be a funny nation that says, okay, Wednesday, Wednesday, you don't say, let us stand and liberate ourselves. Precisely because that organization was established by those people, some of us will respect that organization which was established by our ancestors. Because it was correct, it was true, it was defending the nation. Now, if then the leaders of that organization at a given time turn away from what was given to all of us, they are actually undermining our ancestors' work, right? And undermining the organization itself, which is our tool to liberate ourselves. And some of us were said, I'm leaving the ANC because it has gone out of the way. It's no longer the ANC, we know. This is the Ramaphosa ANC. And we said it. And we continue saying it. They've deviated. They've moved out of the way. But this organization had made struggling in South Africa to be known throughout the world. There are many things that they did. They sacrificed, they died. They followed from the organizations that were called the, or whatever in the past. They do not mention that. As me, with a very sore heart, saying I'm not going to vote for the ANC. I want you to understand this. Why I said, much as I will vote for Mkondo Esizu, <clears throat> but I'll never leave the ANC as a member. I will die the ANC, was respecting our ancestors.
to establish the ANC. You cannot take the history of struggle, the history of struggle of the ANC, run away from it when we have sacrificed it. Some of us served years in prison, went to exile. It was not a nice thing, it was not playing soccer, it was a struggle. And if people were changing this organization, giving it to the whites, the oppressors, they are taking even the history to back to the oppressors. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, I will fight for that. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm in, in the MK, I will fight to get the history of the ANC here to us who fought mm -hmm. for this demolition. People to misunderstand because I did not say all of this. I was just making the point historically that I belong to this organization. But when it was still the organization that was established by our ancestors, this one, which now looks funny, led by somebody else, I'm not going to leave that one. This one I'm leaving, I'm not going to vote for. Clear, 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 clear. I don't want one day, you know, surprise, why team Zoom? <laughs> one day, when I'm an old man, <laughs> I'm very young. Man. citizen of this country that you sold out yeah. by creating other organizations helping the enemy to disperse us so that we don't have a concrete majority yeah. because that's what is done with these little parties that we've been establishing all of us we must come to a point where we realize the reality and I'm telling you this comrade will come to the books of history. He had done something that uh, many would not do because his politics is scientific. Mm -hmm. wow. and that's why, that's why even, even his action has become a big issue. Because it is a scientific issue. Proper scientific. To say, we are closer to our liberation. Let us join together yes. to reach there so that we can help this country in peace with everybody, including the whites, everybody who's here. But for now, this country, there's no peace because black people are like, I don't know how we could describe them. We've got cities. <clears throat> In the city, there is what is called, what is this last time I can go for room? Townships. Township. Why there is a city in the township? Why? If we ask that question, why there's no city only? There's a city and a township. Should we say fine to stay in the township? Where times the toilets are, are not correct? every other thing, until when? Coming with Umkondo uh, Sizwe, we have come with a solution for this country forever, so that there will be peace, there will be harmony, there will be everything. If you don't want it, fine. We'll help you, we'll take you what it will make it. That's why the issue of the black, political parties must come together to be one. Because the ones are not there together. Mm. Because it's only dating and what is going, <coughs> what is this party ever? Mm. Huh? <laughs> DA. Yeah. DA. Dance with the apes. <laughs> if you count it, about There are very few. Now, what phone a product from Kondomabeko? 
back when I'm back, they are few. There is a serious, serious period coming which we want to deal with peaceful, fortunately. That's why when we moving up and down, we're saying we want to have two thirds majority. Yes. Because we want this to come peacefully, no longer through the barrel of the gun. Peacefully. We must come to our senses, realize that we cannot live like this. A city, I know what? Township, a rural area, Why? Where in the rural areas, the way we stay, there's not a single, single hospital. All hospitals in the cities. I don't want to be emotional. I was just telling you that what we are all about is about us bringing this country where it is supposed to be for all its citizens, black and white. We are hating them. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, one day I will, I will, I will have, I will invite you to Ganja with journalists so that I will try to help you, to help you in a job, to quicken this thing we are talking about. Agreed? Wonderful. But we like to thank you for being with us today and the questions we have asked. And as you, as you realize, we are serious, as we have been serious historically, to correct the wrongs. We believe there's a lot of wrongs. We can't sit and be happy when our children are, are, are finished by liquor and everything, and think that that is correct. No. And to sit in the country as if everything is fine. It can be. The youth is the citizens of tomorrow. Yes. And it is our duty, it's our duty to ensure that we have the future of our young people who will be in charge of this country and making life wonderful. We can't. If we sit, we, we no. I mean, people are killed every other day. We've got police, we've got everything. But people are continuing to be killed. They are employed every other year. We have now become so soft to wrong things. We must stop that. That's what we must do. And we are going to stop it. We are going to stop it. All we need is to be in charge of this country. You will see. What we tell you will happen. Mm. You will walk. You will walk in the dark without fearing anybody. Because criminals are going to be put away. Yes. <laughs> you must not take us as if we are jokes. We are just. We, Stand up one and party jail. No. no. We are correcting the situation of our country. Yes. Fortunately, we know why our country was singled out to be <clears throat> to be colonized. To be colonized. Colonized. Yeah. <laughs> Now we can't look aside as if we don't know what happened. And we as citizens who don't want to correct that. We think we must live like this all the time. I think it's our time. Everyone who visited us must feel at home. We will never chase anyone away. But we say there must be equality. If you went to those who have money, the banks, and they asked to establish a business. After questioning you a lot, they'll tell you, sorry, 
you can't help you. That's what happens. So that you remain a semi slave. But if I was white and went there and said I want to do a business, after questioning, they said we have got the money you want. In other words, there is lack of equality treating one another. And I think enough is enough. Enough is enough. Time has come. I want you to look at MK as a solution to the problems of this country. And it is. Took from the old ANC, the same. Not the current one, the other one, false. Later on, no, no, no. So, 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 so. And that's the Babu and Nabandu, our Abanin Kizzi's Flumberish. Not care about their own, their own skin. Our generation is a very chapel and chapel of a chapel and chapel. Chapel and Abba in the Babas of Palama Palai. So, so. <laughs> okay. I'd like to thank the comrades who are here and the ones who have been uh, identified to lead this organization. And indeed, we want to bring changes. We want to have an MK that is disciplined, that respects people that is standing for the interests of the people. Yes. That's what we want to do. Yes. We don't want to see any one of us doing something wrong. Mm. Part of the reason we have said we don't need, <clears throat> we don't need conferences for now, yeah. as we are establishing our, our party. Those conferences have become fake. Mm -hmm. People true. use money, yeah, they buy people to vote yeah, for yeah, them yeah. and do everything. No one is saying that is not going to happen in God's name. Yeah. 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 Yeah.